Sometimes, my friends, the person of your dreams can turn out to be a demon from your nightmares. It started innocently enough. Helga Martin Kaiser was on holiday in the United States from her wealthy, nicely furnished castle in the Black Forest of Germany. High as a kite one evening on red wine, Helga flipped through the phone book in her San Francisco hotel. What was she looking for? Would she be able to deal with it when she found it? Her quest? the most German-sounding name in San Francisco. As fate would have it, she started from the end of the alphabet forward. After passing over several possibilities, including Gates and Menta, she came to the W's and was instantly enamored with my last name, Work. Mostly because of how it was spelled from the E-R-C-K-M-A-N. She switched a W to a V, a K to an H, and added an extra N at the end. She called. I dug her accent and she dug mine. I told her how my grandfather told me I was 7 eighths German and 1 eighth Irish, and that I was sitting on my Irish. She laughed. I coughed, because some water went down the wrong tube. I told her I could live on sauerkraut gummy bears and that I drove a Volkswagen. She asked me what the hell bar for me did. I told her I was going to ask her the same thing. We decided it must just be like Lollapalooza, a really big word. She moved in the next day. Slowly but surely, my life became a living concentration camp. At first, it was the little things that bothered me. I didn't mention these because, to someone else, they may seem insignificant. She ate my food, increasing three sizes. She wore my clothes, throwing out what she didn't like, including my 1983 AL West Champion Chicago White Sox t-shirt. She refused to use the toilet, demanding a human-sized litter box part of her anti-cruelty to animals protest, etc., etc., it went on. But wait, things got worse. She painted all the walls black and hung up pictures of tortured baby seals in every room. She started braiding her armpit hair and refused to shower. She scattered broken glass throughout the house to stop potential robbers, and she loved the smell of rape, so she sprayed it generously each day. But she loved me despite my sexual inadequacies. Still, one can only take so much. So after seven and a half years of relative bliss, I asked her to move out. She refused to, so I moved out. I live under the Bay Bridge now, but still she torches the refrigerator box I live in once a month. Be wary of love, my friends, and be proud to be American, gosh darn it.